Hi, my name is Punchankar and in this video we would be learning Tableau and Power BI together. First of all, what is the rationale behind this? Well, in today's business environment, it is very important to not to be dependent on one particular tool. The concept is all that matters and the tools are merely mediums that will help us to shape our ideas. What we would be doing in this session is to start from the base and pick up certain essential tasks in data preparation and visualization and see how it can be achieved using Tableau and Power BI parallelly. This activity is not aimed at comparing their features but to learn both the tools at the same time. Why to learn both these tools? Well, there is no reason as a professional for us to be aligned with only one particular tool. Tableau and Power BI adoptions are based on each organization's strategy and all we need to do is to get the work done. I have provided the Power BI and Tableau public download link in the video description. Both these versions of softwares are free to use with some limitations. What we are now going to do is open up Power BI, connect to an Excel data and then perform some data transformations after which we will perform the same tasks in Tableau and achieve the same result. I'm opening my Power BI desktop. Once you open it, you would be able to see a dialog box that pops up and it would ask for a sign in to collaborate and share content. So Power BI has two major versions of it. So the first version is what we are trying to learn now, which is the Power BI desktop, where we can connect to data, create data models, and develop visualization. The next platform is to basically share the visualization or analysis which we have created with other users. So this is where the Power BI Pro comes into picture. But right now, the focus is for us to understand Power BI desktop and then we will look into how it can be shared for collaboration so i'm closing this dialog box and this is the home page of power bi desktop so what you see at the top is a ribbon with few tabs like home insert modeling view help similar to what you guys would be able to see in your excel so these tabs typically has all the features that is required for creating visualization and creating data models what you see at the left corner are three different icons. The first icon is what is presently selected and what it says is report. So what you see here is a view of the report. So here is where once the data is connected, we would be able to develop visualization. So the next icon is data. So once you click it, right now you're not able to see anything because we haven't connected the data. But once the data is connected, we would be able to see the data in a tablet format. What you see as the third icon is a data model. So here is where if there is multiple tables available, we will create relationship between those tables and create a data model. So let's go back to the report session. Few other things that you can notice here is you would be able to see page tabs at the bottom. We can create multiple pages and each page can have their own separate visualization. What you see at the right are three different panes, filters, visualizations, and fields. Right now, the fields pane is empty, but once we connect our data, you would be able to see all the fields in the data source listed out here. I would like to now connect to an Excel data source and then bring it into Power BI, perform some transformation on top of it, and then perform visualization. So, under the home tab, you would be able to see get data icon. So once I click on it, I would be able to see the most frequently used connections here. And then if I click more, we would be able to see a wide variety of connections that Power BI offers. You would be able to see file level connections, database, Azure, online services, etc. So what I wanted is to connect to an Excel file. So I'm going to all and i select excel and i select connect so once i do this you there will be a browser window that opens up where you can navigate and select the file which you wanted to connect so right now what i wanted to do is i would like to connect this xlsx so i'm selecting it and giving open so the data which we would be using in this session is 
worldwide GDP data that has been downloaded from World Bank website. I've given the link for this data in the below video description. So once you connect it, there will be a navigator window that would open. You would be able to see the file name which we just connected and then the sheet that is in that particular file name. So this is the sheet where our data is. So I'm selecting on it and you would be able to see a preview of the data. So initially looking at it, you would be able to see there is one major concern where the column names are at the first row wherein I wanted to actually convert it as the headers. So there needs to be few transformations that has to be put on before we start using this data for our analysis. At the bottom corner, you would be able to see three different icons, load, transform data and cancel. I would like to transform this data before I load it for any analysis. So I'm selecting transform data. Now you would be able to see the data which we wanted to transform has been opened in a Power Query editor. What you see at the top are basically ribbons with tabs like what we have in Excel. Tabs like Home, Transform, Add Column, View, Tools, Help. All these all these tabs has features that allows us to make data manipulation and changes easy in this particular window are basically the data that is represented as queries. And what you see at the right is the properties and applied steps. Applied steps is an important thing for us to notice. The reason is whatever changes we are making in this data, all those steps will be captured here. And it also gives us this cross symbol. Whenever there is an action that is done and you would like to revoke it, you can select this cross symbol and the action will be revoked. Now, let's start transforming the data. At the initial look of the data, we would be able to see that the data has country name at row level and year at column. So what I would like to do is first transpose this data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the transform tab and there is an icon called transpose so i'm going to select it so once i do that you would be able to see the data has changed or transposed itself in a way we wanted now the other issue is column names are represented as first row in our data i would like to promote these column names as the actual headers so what i'm going to do is go to home tab and you would be able to see an option to use first row as headers. I'm selecting it and now the header issue is resolved. Now this looks fine but what I wanted to do is I wanted to use this data for a time series kind of analysis. So for us to do that we would like to have all the countries in the row as well. So basically each country should have data for all the years followed by the other country with the data for all the years. So for us to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select on the country column and then right click. You will be able to see a lot of unpivot options here. What I'm going to select is unpivot other columns. The reason I'm doing that is what I'm trying to tell the system is instead of the country name column, unpivot all the other columns. Once I do this, I would be able to see the data has converted into a way we would be using for a time series analysis. So let's rename the columns appropriately. This is done. So now the other issue is you would be able to see year as integer here. All right. So I would like to convert this year into a date column. So I'm selecting on the data type here and then there is an option for us to convert it to a date so I'm selecting date now you would be able to see that the outcome of this is not something which we wanted so what I'm going to do is I'm going to revoke this action change it to the original way it was and then I'm going to convert this year into a string first and then create my own custom calculation to convert this year into date column so how I'm going to do it I'm going to select on the year and then I am changing it into text and then what I am going to do is go to add column 
custom column and then create a custom column named date underscore year. So I'm saying one slash one slash and year. Tab. Okay. And you would be able to see the date year column has exactly what we wanted. Now we will just need to change this data type into date. I'm selecting on this data type and I'm changing into date. Now this seems to be right. Let's have this column and remove the original column. Right click, remove. That's it. Now, one other issue we need to get resolved is if you look at the GDP column, you would be able to see the data type as ABC123. If I click on it, you would be able to see the data is represented as whole number. Whereas this is a float number and we would like to represent this as a decimal number. So let's change it to decimal. It is done. And then let's go here close and apply the changes so once we do this we would be able to see the changes has been loaded into our power bi desktop so now what i wanted to do is i wanted to create some basic visualization so there are two ways in power bi we can do that one is we can choose the visualization over here and then select the fields that needs to be represented in it or we can just select the fields and then based on the fields we select, Power BI will develop its own visualization. So let's try both ways. What I'm going to do first is select the country field. So once I select this, you would be able to see a map with all the countries plotted. And then if I select GDP, you would be able to see all the GDP numbers plotted against their respective country locations. Now, if you remember the data, the data we have is for all the countries in the world from 2000 to 2019. So what you would see here is probably an aggregate of different years. So I would like to filter it out and look for only 2019. So how do I do it? I have a year field here. So let's go to the three dots that's out here for more options and then add to filter. And I'm going to say at visual level filters because I want this filter to be applied only for this particular visualization. Let me select it. And once I select it, you would be able to see the field is added in the filters pane. Now let's select on the filter type and make it basic filtering you would be able to see all the years. Let's scroll down and select only 2019. Now, the representation is only for 2019, but still there is not much clarity out of this map. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to select it, press delete, and then I'm going to create a bar graph. I'm going to try and see a different graph that could help this to be represented in a better way so i'm selecting the bar graph first selecting country and then gdp now you would be able to see gdp of the countries represented in a horizontal bar now if you can hover over it you would be able to see gdp numbers that is unreasonable right this is because it is for different years and then it is aggregated to the level of country. So what I'm going to do is I just wanted to look for the year 2019 alone. So I'm going to go to the year field, click on more options and say add to filters at visual level. And then I'm changing the filter type to basic filtering. And then I'm scrolling down and selecting only 2019. Now. This is the GDP for 2019 for various countries. Now let's say I would like to create a line chart which 
kinds of tells us what is the trend of a GDP for a particular country. Let's say for USA. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the line graph here and then select year and GDP. So you would be able to see a line graphs, but probably this is for all the countries, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to again go to country, go for more options, add to filters, visual level filter. And here I'm going to say only United States. That's it. What you see here is a basic set of graphs that we have created from the data we just transformed. So now let's try to do the same thing in Tableau and see how it works. I'm opening my Tableau desktop public version. I'm opening my Tableau desktop public. And once you open it, this would be the screen you would be seeing. What you can see at the left is an option to connect to a file to a server. Below to a file, you'll be able to see Microsoft Excel, text files, JSON files, etc. And below to a server, you won't be able to see much. That is majorly because of the type of licensing that is being used. So I'm using a Tableau public version, which is a free version that is available for practicing Tableau. So this has limitation in terms of the connections that it can make. But in an actual professional or enterprise version, Tableau offers a lot of connectivity to both cloud servers and on-premise data servers. Another important thing we need to notice is, similar to Power BI, Tableau also has two types of platforms. The first platform is the Tableau desktop version which we are working, which enables us to create visualizations, data transformations, etc. And then and publish it into a server that would be using for sharing the content. So first our focus is to understand Tableau desktop more and then we will look into how we can share the content. I'm going to double click on the Microsoft Excel and navigate to the folder where the data we used for Power BI is located and then double click on that particular data source and that's it. Now, the data is connected and you will be able to see a new screen. If you look into the screen, at the left corner, you would be able to see connections. The name of the file would have been listed and the type of connection would have been stated below. And then you would be able to see the sheet details. In this particular case, there is only one sheet with data and so it is automatically selected. What you see at the space here is basically where we create joints, relationship between tables, etc. In this particular case, since we are having only one sheet, there is nothing for us to create a relationship. We would be seeing those things in the future videos. What you see at the bottom is a preview of the sample data. You would be able to see the data as we saw in Power BI. And what you see below here is a tab named data source. That is specifically what we are seeing. After that, you would be able to see a sheet. So these sheets are similar to certain extent to the pages that we saw in Power BI. So these sheets allows us to create visualizations. And then if you hover over the icons here, after the sheets, you can see dashboards. So after you create visualization in worksheets, you can consolidate those visualizations into a dashboard. And then there's something called story. Story is nothing but you create a visualization and you create storyboard with those visualizations and inferences on top of it. So if you look at the data, the data is similar to what we saw in Power BI. So similar to what we did there, what I would like to do here is, I would like to change the data in such a way that I would use it for time series analysis. So one thing to notice, similar to the transpose option we had in Power BI, there is no option in Tableau for us to transpose the data completely. But there is an option we can achieve the end result 
by using an option called pivot. So what I'm going to do is select everything, control A, deselect country name and right click and select pivot. So now you would be able to see the data is pivoted and it is changed in a way that would be exactly similar to what we had in Power BI. Now let's rename the fields. Now, all I did for renaming the fields is just double click on the field name. Similar to Power BI, you guys would be able to see the data type mentioned here. And similar to what we saw on Power BI, you can click on this and you can change the data type as required. So if you look at the year, the year column is represented as ABC, which is nothing but string. So let's click on it and then let's choose state. So different to Power BI, now we are able to see Tableau is able to change the data type and give us the result as we want it. But let's say for some reason the year is all messed up and then you are not able to get the exact result as we want it. So let's say Control Z, which is the only way to revoke the action in Tableau. And then let's create a calculated field. Click here, create calculated field, and let's say date of year. I'm just seeing one slash one slash close quotation, and then instead of and, I'm using plus, and then I'm saying year. Okay, and now we are able to see the data as we wanted. We will go here, change the data type to date, and we got it as we wanted just right click on the original column and give height that's it now the data is ready let's take this data into the visualization window which is the sheet and perform some visualizations so once you come into the sheet where the visualization is going to happen you would be able to see a lot of options out here tabs that gives a lot of features that you can use for data manipulation and visualization and then at the left you would be able to see the name of the data connection that has been made in this case it's sheet one and then you would be able to see the fields listed out you will see a thin line which basically differentiates the dimensions which is at the top and measures which is at the bottom now apart from this you would be able to see an option as show me here if you click it you would be able to see all different types of charts so once you select a field you would be able to see certain charts are enabled here based on the type of field you have chosen the space which you see here is kind of a canvas where we will be creating our visualizations what you see above it are columns and rows these are basically shells that will allow the visualization to change as per the manipulations we make and you would be able to see pages filters and marks marks play a very important role because it helps us customize the visualization as we want now similar to power bi we can create visualization in tableau in two different ways one is we just double click on the fields we want and then tableau creates its own visualization the other way is we select the fields we go to show me and we would be able to select one visualization among the options available there now let's try both the things let's double click on country name we would be able to see all the countries are plotted and then let's double click on gdp we would be able to see the gdp numbers are plotted against each country location now let's say I would like to see the GDP for countries only for 2019 and not an aggregate of it like what we see because it's totally unreasonable. So I'm going to drag country name. I'm sorry. I'm going to drag date underscore year into filters. So when I do that, it will ask at what level of detail would I like to filter? So I'm going to say years. And I'm choosing 2019 okay so this is the visualization 
that represents GDP for all country names for 2019. Now, let's say how we can see this as a filter. Let's click here, show filter, and you will be able to see the filter here. Now, this is fine, but uh, I don't think like this is something that represents uh, meaningful information. So, let's make this visualization a little more basic level. Let's remove this by clicking the cross button here. So one major difference is in Power BI, in the pages that was at the bottom, we would be able to create multiple visualization in a single page. But in Tableau, we would be able to create only one visualization per sheet. So I'm going to select country name. I'm going to press my control key and then select GDP. Now I'm going to show me and you would be able to see all the graphs that is enabled based on the fields you have selected. I'm going to go with the bar chart. So now you're able to see the bar graph with all the details we wanted. And I can filter this out in the same way we did before, like drag the date here, choose years and then say 2019. Now, let's say I would like to create a line graph, not for all the countries because probably it would be an aggregate, say only for United States. Let me create a new sheet by clicking on the new worksheet here. And then let's say date underscore year. Once I do that, you would be able to see the year that is appearing here. And then GDP. And then go to show me and then select line graph. So now this is good, but probably these are for all the countries with unreasonable GDP. So I'm going to filter the country name only for USA. I'm going to drag and drop the country name in filter. I'm going to just search here United States. Select it, give OK. Now, you would be able to see a time series for United States alone. The purpose of this session is to get an hands-on understanding of how Tableau and Power BI works at the base level. In this session, we were able to connect to our data, we were able to perform basic transformations, and we were able to create very basic visualizations in both Tableau and Power BI. In the subsequent videos, what we would be trying to do is to improvise on top of these things. We would be connecting to data and we would be trying to create advanced transformations and advanced visualizations. I hope this helps you guys getting started in Tableau and Power BI. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Stay connected by subscribing my channel to dive into more details and learn more together. Please give a thumbs up and share if you have liked this video. Also. Please comment below for any questions in this video and I will do my best to help you guys out.